Hi, my name's Alan Smith, and in part two of this Python for C Sharp developers series of webcasts, we're going to look at decision statements, if, else, for each, etc. So I'll be working in Visual Studio for this webcast. I'm going to create a new project, and I'm going to start with a .NET Core console application. So I'll call this uh, Python versus C Sharp dot C Sharp. The solution can be Python versus C Sharp. Click on Next, I'll use .NET Core 3.1, that should be fine, and create that project. What this has created for me uh, is the sample Hello World console application, so I can run that, and you can see it's saying Hello World. So to do the same thing in Python, uh, I'm going to add a new project. I'm going to select Python application, and this will be Python versus C Sharp dots Python. And what I'm going to do is just create a, a splitter window here. So we can basically see the code of these uh, these um, two examples that I'm working with. And what I can do is start to compare uh, C Sharp and Python. So I'm going to copy this chunk of code here, drop it into here. Now, instead of doing a console right line in Python, we're just going to do print. And uh, in Python, we don't use a semicolon, so I can get rid of that. So I can set, set this as a startup project and click the button to start. And you can see, same thing, uh, we're getting Hello World in the console application. So immediately uh, we can see quite a bit of difference here. Uh, there's a, quite a lot of scaffolding uh, around the C Sharp project, although in newer console applications you can basically skip that and it kind of looks a bit more like the Python one. But this is really what's going on. We've got an internal class called program. We've got a namespace called Python versus C sharp dot C sharp. And then we've got this main method here with the arguments coming in and we've got console write line hello world. Whereas in Python, uh, we're just printing out hello world. We haven't had to, to add any using declarations or do any imports. We haven't had to create a class or generate a method. It's just gonna run that script. Another big difference, if you look in the C-sharp, we've got this bin folder, we've got a debug folder, .NET Core App 3.1. And in here, uh, we've got these DLLs and the exe files. So I've got an executable uh, that I can use to run this console application. And if I want to run that exe file, I can spin up a command prompt, just tab through until I find the Python versus C-sharp.exe, and I can run that and it says, hello world. However, if you go into the Python folder, we've just got this script file. So what I can do here is open a command prompt. And I can run the Python script by typing in Python and then specifying the name of the script. And you can see it's coming back with hello world. So this shows that Python is a scripting language. Uh, we're creating scripts, and those scripts are going to be run using Python. We're not compiling this into an exe file like we do with the .NET console application. OK, so I'm going to look at uh, looping. And I'll start out with a for loop. So I can use the tab to autocomplete this in C Sharp. Specify 10 as the length, and you can see the um, Syntax of this is for i equals naught, semicolon, i is less than 10, semicolon, i plus plus. This is kind of uh, coming from the uh, the C programming language. I think the first time I saw this was it was programming in C. We're basically initializing a variable, and whilst uh, this condition is true, then we're going to go around this loop, and we're going to be incrementing at this variable. So what I can do is basically take this hello world. I can drop this in here. I can delete this bit here, and uh, we can basically say looping. And we've got this um, formatting in um, C Sharp where I can put in the dollar sign. And I can drop in that variable there. OK, so I'll set this as a startup project. And you can see it say looping 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. OK, so let's look at doing the same thing in Python. So the loop is defined for i in range 10. And um, we have a colon at the end. We're not going to use the curly braces um, for defining scope. We're going to be using uh, indentation. So I can basically um, cut this and paste it in here. And uh, we also have uh, the same type of formatting in Python. However, these are referred to as F strings. So what I can do is just basically copy this 
and it's pretty much the same syntax with the curly braces here. So we do use curly braces in here when we're using the string formatting there, but it's the indentation uh, that, governs, that governs this particular scope. Okay, so I'll right click on this and do start with debugging. And you can see we get the same thing, looping from zero up to nine. Now this range thing is actually gonna generate an innumerable. It's kind of like in .NET, where we basically have an array and we basically iterate through the array using a for each. It's basically gonna generate an innumerable of zero to 10. If I stick a breakpoint on here and we start this with debugging, we can just drop range 10 into the window and you can see it's generating this range between zero and 10 with a start of zero, stop of 10 and a step of one. We can also govern uh, what the start and the step and the stop values are gonna be when we're defining a range. So within um, C Sharp, what we can do is basically say, well, let's run from uh, five to 15 and we can say I plus equals two. And then you can see it's saying five, seven, nine, 11, 13. It's basically going from five, uh, as long as it's less than uh, 15 in iterations of two. So we can do that in Python. Uh, we can specify the start, which is gonna be five, and the end, which is gonna be 15, and the step, which is gonna be two. So there, uh, we're getting the same thing coming out in Python. So I'm gonna use the magic of Control Z to get back to the previous implementation, and I'll do the same thing, or undo the same thing in the uh, C Sharp project there. So making decisions, uh, what I can do is basically drop in an if else clause. So I'll drop in a, an if statement and we'll say if i is equal to five, and then uh, we're gonna print out five alive, else we'll just print out the original value. Now, this is kind of bad indentation. Uh, it doesn't look too clear. However, it doesn't matter in C Sharp. That will still compile and it will still run. So, you know, this is why we've got all of different choices of, you know, if we do things like this, if you use tab, if you use one space, if you use two spaces and, and various things like that. It doesn't really matter what we do with the indentation. However, in Python, uh, it's a different story. If I was to do this, for example, you can see we're getting an exception occurring here because there is uh, indentation error. So indentation is very important in Python and uh, that's basically gonna govern uh, the scopes that we're using instead of using these curly braces. So what I can do is just do a control KD in my C Sharp project to be able to correct that. So same implementation in Python. I'm gonna say if I is equal to five colon, and then we're gonna print five alive. So what I can do is just copy that there else we're gonna print that we are looping. Now we get the same result in uh, Python. So we need to remember uh, that we're not using curly braces, we're not using semicolons, we're using these colons at the end of the statements and the indentation is very important here. And notice that C Sharp has these brackets around the statements and these brackets are required. This is gonna complain if I don't have those brackets in. In Python, you do have the option, if you want, of sticking brackets around the if statements. So if you're in the habit with that with C Sharp, nothing wrong uh, with doing that. That will still run fine. And notice that both of these languages use the double equals sign for an equals operation. If I remove that in C Sharp, it's complaining about an error. In Python, we're gonna get an exception here. Now, because this is an interpreted language, um, depending on the kind of intelligence of your editor, it may pick up on these errors, it may not. Here it's, it's not. However, in C Sharp, it does uh, pick up and identify this and you get the red squigglies telling you that something is wrong. I've lost count of the number of hours I've spent in C and C++ projects back in the day because I used a single equals instead of a double equals. So basically the C compiler will just basically set I to the value of five. It will uh, count that as true. And uh, the logic for some bizarre reason doesn't seem to do what it, uh, what it should do. So it's good that we've got those uh, both uh, checked for us uh, when we execute the code. So next we'll look at if else ladders. So if I say else if i is equal to seven, and then drop an else down here, what I can do is say lucky seven. 
And you can see there, we're getting a lucky seven out in the console. So what we're doing in C-sharp, this is basically an else statement, and then we've just got another if statement here. So these are kind of like two separate options. So I'll try the same thing in Python, else if i is equal to seven, we're gonna print uh, lucky seven. And see what that does. Yeah, it doesn't like that. So in Python, we have to use elif, this statement. So if i is equal to five, else if uh, i is equal to seven, or elif i is equal to seven, uh, otherwise uh, we're just gonna print out looping. So let's just see if that one's gonna work. Yeah, that one does seem to uh, to work there. I prefer else if uh, than elif. Uh, it's not that um, clear, you know, it's not really an English uh, English word, um, but that's kind of the way that we work with these if else ladders within uh, within Python. Okay. So let's look at um, the for each operators if we're iterating through collections or iterating through arrays. So I'll get rid of that code and I'll define an array. It's gonna be a new string array and it's gonna be foo bar. And the IntelliSense even knew that I was gonna use bar as uh, the next item in the array. And then I'll drop on buzz as the third element in the array. So I can run through a for each. Uh, we're specifying for each item in array. And I can print out the item. So it's displaying foo bar buzz. Fairly, uh, fairly straightforward. So let's look at how that works in Python. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is to get rid of this code in Python. I'll actually copy this uh, array declaration across and convert it into how it will look in Python. So um, we don't need to um, specify var. I can just specify array is equal to, and then I'm gonna use a, a square bracket um, to start the array and another square bracket uh, to close the array. And that will generate my string array. So creating an array in Python is uh, much less keystrokes and uh, scaffolding than it is in C Sharp. I don't have to specify var or the actual type, don't have to say it's a new string array, it will just create that for me as an array of strings. So now I do for item in array, colon, and then we can print item. And you can see we're getting foo bar buzz coming out from Python. Now the strings, uh, it is possible to use either the double quotes or the single quotes uh, when we're working with Python. So this will also work. And these are interchangeable. It can be very useful if you want to do something like, uh, something like that. Uh, that I don't need to use the escape characters for the double quotes. And we've got that as a uh, string uh, there. I quite often use uh, the single quotes when I'm coding in Python. Uh, it just kind of uh, makes the code look a bit cleaner uh, than the double quotes, but you can use either and either is fine. So uh, controlling Z back to the um, previous loop, if I can do that. For item in array is very similar for I in range 10. It's generating an enumerable uh, that we can uh, run through. Just control Z a few times in the C sharp project to get back to that loop again. There we go. So another way of making these decisions, uh, what I could do is basically say console right line, and then within here, I can specify the ternary operator. I can say i is equal to five, question mark, and then if i is equal to five, we can say five alive. And then I can use the colon operator, and uh, I can say looping. This is something uh, that we've had uh, for ages. Uh, I remember doing this in um, C or C++ back in the day. And what this will do is basically do the same thing as if we were using an if else statement. So if i is equal to five, then the, it's gonna print out five alive. Otherwise, it's gonna print out looping. We can do the same thing in Python. So what I can do here is say that the output is gonna be equal to five alive if count is equal to five, else it's gonna be equal to looping. So what that will do is basically do the ternary operator in Python, and then we can print that output there. So let's just uh, run that. If i is equal to five, not if count is equal to five. 
And then you can see uh, that's the ternary operator in uh, Python. Okay, we've also got the option of being able to break out of loops here. So if i is equal to five, we can basically break from that loop. So if I run this now, you can see it says zero, one, two, three, four. We hit five, it says five alive. And then we basically exit from the loop. Because I'm using this break statement, we're gonna jump out of the loop. And we have the same concept in Python. If i is equal to five, we can break. And it's doing the same thing. We're exiting from that loop with the break statement. Continue uh, works very similar as well. We've also got the option to uh, use continue if we want to do that. Okay, so um, within um, C Sharp, we've also got the option to do these as one-liners. So I could do that if I is equal to five break. One of the advantages of doing it the, uh, the other way, if I just do control Z, is you can actually stick a breakpoint on here and you'll be able to hit this in the debugger if um, this breakpoint is hit. But it is possible uh, if you want to reduce the number of lines to just do that as a one-liner. So that works fine. In Python, uh, we've also got the option of one-liners in these if statements. And let's run that. And you can see it's doing the same thing. Uh, we're breaking from that loop. So this has just been a quick introduction to adapting to Python from a C-sharp perspective. In the next webcast, we'll be taking a look at functions. So please subscribe if you want to be notified when there's new content.